execute. So I will post the recording later as well. Right, so basically I will be teaching uh, classical mechanics to you. And let me, so if you look at, uh, so there are some materials that I have posted to the LMS. And these materials are actually, uh, make sure that you go through those uh, materials and let me just share my screen. Right, so I'm um, assume that you can. Uh, so can everyone of you see my screen? I guess you can. Uh, just let uh, post me a chat message or just unmute your microphone and let me know in case you can't uh, see my computer screen. Right, so I have. Uh, you should see a screen with the uh, picture and have the topic called. Uh, PHY4024 lecture one uh, in classical mechanics. And if you can't see, please let me know. Right, and uh, so I guess I should be including here. So in this course, this is a four credit course, by the way, right? To introduce, so let me write it here. So this is a four credit course and uh, so there will be 60 lectures so 40 of these lectures uh, would be uh, classical mechanics and then there will be 20 lectures from special theory of relativity. Right, so this will be roughly the content. Uh, so I will be teaching these first 40 lectures for you, uh, which is about classical mechanics. And uh, then Dr. Nadisha will take on after that for the last 20 lectures. And this is uh, about relativity. But when you say relativity, there are uh, two theories. One is called special theory of relativity and the second one is called general theory of relativity. Actually, this course, uh, you, you will be only learning about the special theory of relativity uh, in the last 20 lectures and uh, the general theory of relativity you will be uh, doing it in the next semester and this is uh, combined with the cosmology course that uh, you will have in the next semester and i will be teaching that as well right so this is roughly the content and i will actually take the first 10 weeks to complete these 40 lectures uh, from the classical mechanics and then uh, Dr. Nadisha will take on the last 20 lectures which will be about special theory of relativity and for now actually, you will have a final exam and this will be three hours and uh, the format of the exam paper will be around uh, nine questions. So by the way, you will not have MCQ uh, paper like that you had for some of the courses in the first two years. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, you don't have MCQ papers for all the courses in special degree. But for this particular course, uh, you will not have. So I will be not giving any MCQ questions for you. And you will have nine questions. And then you have to answer 
six of those. And questions in the paper. And then three hours. So we have three hours. And then uh, answer. Six questions. So this will be your final exam. Apart from this, you may have a midterm exam and this is actually uh, still uh, make sure that you prepare for a midterm exam for within my uh, 40 lectures and I will show you uh, down in the notes that is mentioned and this may count let's say 20 percent of your final grades Right. So make sure that you prepare for this one and this is just to make sure that you follow the course uh, from the beginning. And uh, right, so that will be the format. And then uh, so if I look at if you if I look at the course content for the classical mechanics part. We will briefly talk about Newtonian mechanics, but not that much. And uh, and then uh, we will move. I guess uh, in the uh, second year in your studies, I, I assume that you have done some uh, classical mechanics in one of the courses. Is that correct? Hello. Okay, yes, yeah, so you have done some classical mechanics, right? So you, I, I assume that you probably have learned about Lagrangian mechanics and something called small oscillations in that course at least. And uh, just to mention that this, this uh, particular course is a continuation of that, however, uh, if you have missed something in there, you, there, this is the time for catch up. So I will basically redo it. Redoing means not everything, but I will start from Newtonian mechanics. And today I will be discussing about a little bit about Newton's second law and those kind of things and some of the strategies that we will be you can you have to use when in terms of problem solving when you solve problems. And then I will move on to a different techniques, a different technique to solve the same problems, which is Lagrange equations. And uh, so I assume that all you should have done this within your second year, but I will go through the proof of the Lagrange equation. And after that, we will use the Lagrange equation to solve problems, which is our final, right? So which means I have not uh, uh, written the learning outcomes here, but at the end of the 40 lectures, I would expect that you should be able to solve any any problem related to the Lagrange equation, right? So if I throw any kind of problem to you, you should be able to write the Lagrange equation and the solve it, right? And the, at the first point, we will see that why actually we are learning about Lagrange equation because we know Newtonian mechanics, right? So one thing that we have to figure out is why we are actually learning Lagrange equation because we know Newton mechanics, we have the Newton second law. Is there anything special about Lagrange equation that we uh, have to learn? Because once you know one one way of solving problems, why we are using Lagrange equations? Okay, and then we will uh, talk as a third point that I have mentioned here. We will talk about conservation laws, and you already know some conservation laws, right? like momentum conservation, energy conservation, those kind of things. And this is actually one of the very interesting uh, topics in classical mechanics, the conservation laws and symmetries, right? All these conservation laws, there is a symmetry that you can find in nature, which is associated with these conservation laws, which you may not have got uh, very deeply in, uh, in your course in second year, but here we have to talk about that, right? So always, once you have a Lagrange equation uh, written, and uh, depending on the 
the coordinates that you are using and also the symmetries, we can actually find some conservation laws, right? Which is, which is a very interesting topic and we will talk about that as well. And then I have mentioned that integration of equation of motion here. And this is actually the, what, what I mean from here is that once you solve or have the Lagrange equations and solve it, what you will have is actually a differential equation. And the students who did double maths uh, maybe know uh, more about this. And others also, if you have followed the mathematics course in mathematics, you probably know that, uh, know how to solve differential equation. Now, once you have a differential equation, finally you have to integrate that, right? And so we will not have a separate lesson actually for integration of equation of motion, but, uh, but we will be learning about that while we are go going through these topics, right? So that's what, what will happen. And then after the conservation laws, actually there is one topic I feel that it is missing. Let me introduce it here. So that's actually variational principle. This is a variational principle is something that uh, comes in every, most of the branches in physics. When you do quantum mechanics probably next year, uh, you will also learn something about variational principle to find something called ground state of like hydrogen atom and those kind of things. But variational principle actually comes from classical mechanics and then it will be applied to quantum mechanics. And here in the variational principle, we will actually learn, uh, uh, learn how to actually prove the Lagrange equations again and then you see. So let me just keep it there. All right. And uh, so once you have this Lagrange equations and variational principle, we will move on to uh, learn about Kepler's problem. And this is basically, we call this as motion of a central, uh, motion of central field problem or Kepler's problem. And in this particular section, so our aim is to learn about uh, the motion of, of planets around the sun. And then when you have two bodies uh, move under gravity, so this is, uh, this is what we call as a, a motion of our planet. So that's what happens. So they are moving under gravity. So we will learn about those under this particular section about the central forces, right? And then uh, there is a section called small oscillations. And this is uh, again, like one of the very important topics in uh, classical mechanics and as well as in others, other fields of study such as solid state physics and so and so because there are only few problems actually that we know the exact answers in uh, classical mechanics or in, in, in physics and the small oscillations uh, the motion of the harmonic oscillator is one of those. And we will, we will learn small oscillations based on that. And then we will apply small oscillations to different problems. And we will, we will talk about that more uh, in that particular section. And then there is a section called rigid body motion. So this is about uh, the motion of rigid bodies. And once again, uh, we will talk about that in that particular section. And there are different techniques that we will be using in classical mechanics uh, to solve problems. And those are come as the last options, which are canonical equations and Hamiltonian equations of motion. Right? And you can see that from the topics that we are covering. And the, this goes more deeper than what you have done in classic, for the classical mechanics in, uh, in your second year. Right? But don't worry, once you follow the lectures in an order, I mean, you will be fine and you can, the so only thing is you just need to make sure that you make sure that you go with the lectures and complete all the tutorials and those things on time so that uh, you will have the required knowledge at the end of the lectures. And uh, I have actually divided uh, lessons week by week as well here. 
So in the week one, which is uh, uh, today and uh, next Friday, so I will be talk about uh, the introduction that I did today and then the references, uh, which I will use, which will come after this. And the problem solving strategies, the different strategies that you have to know about problem solving in classical mechanics. And then there, is, there is a section called introduction to Jupyter Notebook. Right. So this is actually a bit computational, which I, something new that I have added. And uh, so by, by the way, just to let you know that this is the first time that I am teaching this course. And uh, uh, so I have added this part right here, the introduction to Jupyter Notebook. And this will be uh, some addition uh, for your knowledge. Uh, so while you are doing classical mechanics, there will be some points and some problems actually that you cannot solve. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, you have to numerically solve those problems, which means there are no exact solution in, uh, which means you have to know some programming for those kind of things, right? But I will not go too very deep into programming because that is not required. So anybody who haven't done computer science, don't worry about this. But uh, so I will be using frequently sometimes this uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, and for example, this particular note that I am showing to you is made using Jupyter Notebook, right? I mean, the purpose actually I'm doing this through Jupyter Notebook is I just need to introduce you this uh, uh, software. Or this is actually a software and at the same time, this is a notebook that you can write programming and at the same time you can do small like coding and at the same time you can write whatever you want and this is like and at the end you can save it as an html page and use it right and these things actually you have to build up as extra skills at the end of these two years so i want to uh, just introduce uh, this to you at the initial point but uh, don't worry about that too much, but I will I will show you uh, different things that you can do so that at some point, uh, if we have time and some of the problems, we will uh, discuss uh, using small codes uh, using this Jupyter notebook, right? So don't worry about uh, not knowing anything about this. And I know that you don't know about uh, anything, but we will learn uh, little by little about that. And uh, then I will, uh, actually I will assign you a few problems related to Newton's laws and these will be uh, some easy problems for you, which you probably have done even in your A-levels, but I want to uh, go through those problems and solve those. So I'm going to assign those problems, probably you will see a, a small, uh, set of I guess three problems tonight in the LMS so make sure that you solve those three problems <clears throat> before you come to the next class which means on Friday and this will not take that much time and the problems will be the very familiar to you probably you probably have solved this in your A-level as well the idea is I need you to get uh, some idea about Newton's laws before we move into the Lagrange equation so that you will understand why we are doing it. And then uh, uh, there is a, uh, in the next week, at the start of the next week, we will learn about a new technique to solve classical mechanics problems. And this is actually about the Lagrange equations. And I will first show you one problem that you already solved in uh, Newton, using Newton's law and uh, show you that how to write a Lagrangian and solve the same problem so that you will get an idea why we are actually learning about Lagrange equations. And then we will move on to the mathematical aspects and the proofs behind the, the Lagrange equation, which is about the virtual displacement. And also we learn about different types of constraints. You probably have heard about those things, but we will, we will learn about those uh, again and again. And then the Lambert principle and Lagrange equations. And into the third week, uh, or maybe at the end of the second week, we will go into solve uh, examples 
and solve problems using Lagrange equations, right? So this part will be very important. And I expect at the, by the end of third week, I expect that you will you should be able to uh, solve lots of uh, problems related to the Lagrange using Lagrangian mechanics, right? And you will you will understand it how easy to solve a problem using Lagrangian mechanics compared to Newtonian mechanics. And at the same time, you will also learn that uh, it is easy to use Lagrangian mechanics to solve complex problems rather than by having these free body diagrams and marking forces and applying a equal and may for each and every object. So you will see the difference. So that's what I want you to understand. And then as I mentioned earlier, you will again learn about the variational principle and then uh, conservation laws and symmetries. And this, these are actually, even though I divided it to week by week, these conservation laws and symmetries, they will be directly related to the uh, Lagrange equations, right? And then there is another uh, small section called Lagrange multipliers. You may not have learned about this previously, and this is actually uh, something related to different type of constraints and different way of uh, solving a set of problems, right? But still, it will be again Lagrangian mechanics. And then we will move on to, uh, so I uh, actually have mentioned here problem sets that I am planning to give you and around which time that they will come out. Uh, but uh, this is just a tentative schedule, right? So this can change depending on how fast and how slow that we go through. And uh, in the, into the week five, which is halfway of your lectures, uh, we will start learning about central force problem. And this is uh, actually learning about, then we will learn about Kepler's laws. And you may already know about Kepler's laws and you probably have done this in second years as well. And we will go into a little bit more into details how these orbits work. And uh, you know that there is, a, there is this uh, meteor shower that goes on, right? And you may be wondering that how people know that at which time that these meteors come and which time, which time these things actually moves away from the sun. And this path of the meteors, uh, so the path of actually the asteroids uh, that related to these meteors, you can actually derive using these uh, concepts about the central force problems. And you can actually decide depending on the potential of these meteors sorry the asteroids that whether it will come again or not those kind of things right so we will look, look into those things in uh, under this central force problem and of course we will learn about the motions of the planets as well right. and then into the uh, the next week uh, we will go about uh, learning small oscillations and once again i assume that you may have learned okay learn a bit more about small oscillations and uh, these kind of things in your undergraduates, but we will go and uh, go a little bit more deeper into that, about the proofs of this and then how to use the concept of small oscillations uh, to solve problems. Right? And then uh, I guess after the sixth week, when you go into the seventh, eighth, and these last few weeks, the things that you will meet I assume that this will be completely new for you. It is about kinematics of a rigid body, which we will actually learn about these spinning tops and uh, rigid bodies, how they move and the dynamics of rigid bodies and those kind of things. And in the final two weeks, we will learn about Hamilton equations, canonical equations, and these are again, uh, some additions to the techniques that you already have learned in the uh, first few weeks. And uh, apart from that, you will uh, use, uh, you will learn about these equations and at the same time, we will talk why they are important, right? So that will be roughly, and then I will, if everything goes well, I will take like the final, like when it goes to 10 3, we will do some problem solving sessions and depending on the time that we have.
and keep in mind that uh, so I plan to have a midterm exam after five or six weeks and once again the, the, the complete schedule is completely tentative right this can change uh, sometimes depending on how things are working especially under this condition right so this is just a rough uh, rough schedule that we have right now for the references what what do you need to refer and the lectures that I am doing, except for the first two days, especially when it comes to the next week, these lectures are actually the most, uh, most of the things are based on this uh, lecture series that I have put here, classical mechanics lecture series from International Center of Theoretical Physics. And you know, ICT is, uh, this is uh, the main research institute that we have in this area for physics and they have these postgraduate courses and the lectures that I am doing is I have aligned everything that I am doing with this particular lecture series. The idea is uh, even though you miss a lecture from me at any time you can go here and learn a little bit about that right. By the way you may not be completely understand understandable sometimes but most of the things that I am doing, I have aligned my lectures with this lecture series as well. So this is just to give you some additional uh, opportunity to uh, to understand something. And the next thing is sometimes uh, if the classes start at classes will get start physically at the university. So I will be asking you to actually go and look at this. So some of these lectures and I will be assigning a worksheet for you to fill out based on the lectures and then you will come to the class and I will discuss about that. Right? So that, that, that is actually the, that was actually the plan but we have to change it because we have to uh, convert the lectures into online. But keep this in mind at some point we will go into that particular method. Even in the online I will assign sometimes but I know that some of you have issues in accessing YouTube because that you have to consume data and those kind of things. So that's why I just hold it. But anybody who likes to know what I will be teaching, just go and watch this lecture series. Right? If you go towards the end, it will be the same that I will be doing, right? Because classical mechanics, you can't, you know, that uh, people have found everything. So I'm just, uh, we are just learning those things. and. The main reference book will be Classical Mechanics uh, from the Gold's time. So let me, so I can show this to you. This is actually the book uh, that I will be using. And this is a very popular and a standard book that probably use everywhere in the world in most of the Classical Mechanics courses. So, in the first chapter of this book is already available in the LMS that you can go and read it anytime. Uh, so make sure that you uh, go and read books. Reading books is very important when you are doing special degree because we will not uh, teach everything in the class. And then there is another book that I have mentioned uh, from uh, Classical Mechanics from John R. Taylor. And the reason that I put this particular book in the list is, I will not use that frequently, but anybody, if anybody is interested in, this is a very good reading book, right? If you go and read it, the English is uh, more simple compared to the standard textbook. And everything is very uh, nicely explained in a very simple way so that you can just go and look at it. And it has all the contents that we, are, we will be uh, looking at throughout the semesters using this book as well. Right. And I can see if I have the book right here. Okay, yeah, so I mean, uh, this book, just go and search for it. You, you probably will be able to find it online. Right? So make sure that you just go to when. So there are all the uh, the basics starting from Newton's laws of motion and the projectiles that you have learned in the undergraduate and then the 
the conservation momentum conservation and energy conservation those kind of these uh, things are in the book and the, the order will be a little bit different but it is very nice book that you can go and read through and understand very easily the things that we we are going to cover in the course we we'll start from chapter 6 in that book so so that will be from uh, chapter 6 from john r taylor so just to just for your information uh, in case you uh, need it and uh, so it has the proof of lagrange equations with constraints and uh, everything that we will learn and in the central force there is a chapter about central force problems and by the way there are some chapters that we will not talk about in that book as well right the, so there is uh, mechanics for non coriolis force and those kind of things and rigid bodies i mean everything is there right so just there are even uh, some chapters something extra Uh, something bit more extra than what we are talking as well. So, and even in the the book that I told you in the textbook, I will be not covering all the chapters. Basically, I will let you know which chapter that we are in now for the first few, first one or two weeks. In this book about the Goldstein, we will be doing uh, the first chapter one, and then chapter two. So chapter one also in the very very basic. Uh, things like uh, mechanics of systems of particle i will not go through those things because i assume that you already have done those things basically we will be focused starting from constraints that is starting from uh, 1.3 goals right so i would i would like that you just go through and read that particular section in the book and also look at the the video exercises that i have assigned and there is another uh, book called classical mechanics a contemporary approach by george uh, v jones and this book is actually a bit advanced than uh, what we are using uh, but basically the same contents and a little bit more and i just put those things here sometimes this information may be useful for anyone who is just uh, doing Post the youth studies in the future, right? So that's references and everything. Right now, let's go for the today's lecture. Right. So I have been talking for one hour now. Anybody have any questions up here? i would uh, something that actually i forget to tell you regarding uh, at the beginning is make sure that you uh, within these two years make sure that you polish up your english knowledge right so it is true that you are at different levels but make sure that you have your english knowledge that is one of the barriers that some of you have when uh, trying to enter the postgraduate study so because you always have to take an exam like ielts or bofet uh, which english is a must because without passing the english you will not be able to even apply for another country for a tip so make sure that you finish your you get um, improve your english knowledge and the best place to do is do it is here right because even you can talk anything here with me so i am not going to uh, like uh, insult you or correct you anything so as long as i understand what you are telling it's fine right okay so i have a question asking that whether these books are freely available to download so this is I mean, you know how to download books, right? I mean, I can't tell you to download this, but you know how to download it, right? So just take it from anywhere. Uh, all these books are basically, I know, available in internet that you can download PDF copies, right? And if you need, 
just send me an email if you can't find but i i can send you these these pdfs i have those right but you you can also find it i mean easily i mean you know how to find it right sometimes students have told me how to find these books so i guess you know better than me how to find those so these are yes the answer is yes they are they are i mean not officially free but they are available in the internet so you can can take it right it is always debatable with the, whether this is legal or not which, which i i don't uh, want to comment on that but you can uh, yes there are there are these books are available free but if in any case if you can't find it if you need the book just send me an email so i need this classical mechanics i will send it to you so to be the right right so thank you for asking that question right so if anybody else if you have any questions please please feel free to ask ask any any questions right now right because at this starting point i know that you you will have some questions like that so and the good thing is the lecture series that i have assigned you through the youtube and this book that i am assigning you these all these things are aligned in a nice way that you can follow these things together right so they are not randomly put uh, here so i have i have looked at and i have gone through these youtube lecture series and selected the ones that is better for you that goes with the book and that's how they are selected so you don't have to what you about that so i would say 90% of the things there are 16 lectures in that six that lecture series by the way and all of them are one and a half hour lectures which is roughly 30 hours so we will basically cover the same content in the in this course as well right so you will also get an idea what kind of level that we are doing by looking at those lectures as well so if anybody would like just go ahead and look at the lecture so i will basically uh, follow it in the same way most of the things there are certain things that i have avoided for example there is a section called scattering problem which i i will not do which is available in the book and uh, and as well as in the videos as well right so so as i have mentioned here so i will use most of the things uh, from the book and the lectures from the ictp and uh, things that you have to keep in mind is that the problem solving is very important and the next time when you join online make sure that you keep your uh, keep uh, a notebook and a pen with you because i'm i am not going to talk through all two hours like i do in the do today from the next day i will ask you to talk right so i will assign let's say few problems to you and you will be explaining to me how to do those things right so it's okay to get things wrong but still uh, you have to involve with this thing otherwise it will be boring and at the same time i am just talking and you will you may not learn anything right and uh, so as you know that physics is something that you have to learn so i have note down here as well physics is something that you learn to be exercises right with many problems so many problems that you do you will understand more so that's how it works right and so you will see that i am struggling to this problem some uh, in the board and when i am lecturing and i hope that you will the idea is you will look at what i am doing and i hope that you will inspire from that and then you will also solve problems yourself right so that's how that's how we actually developed ourselves and up to this point and we hope that you will follow the same right right and then uh, as the starting point so i will start from uh, newton's second law and i am not going to spend much time with these 
because all of all almost all of you know you can sleep at second law which I have written here. And I, I would assume that you can still see my screen, right? In case if you can't see, just uh, uh, just uh, unmute your microphone and let me know that you can't see the screen, right? So I'm assuming that all of you are watching what I am doing here. Right, so uh, one thing that you have to note here is the, this equation right here, f equal ma is a second order differential equation, right? So look at it in that way, not like what you, uh, not like how you did it in all A levels, right? So this is a second order differential equation and if you, normally when you write it, you write, you should write it f equal m d 2x over dt squared, right? Something like that. It's a second order differential equation. And if there is a particle which moves under gravity, so let me let me just so there are certain things sometimes I used to write and share with you. And uh, so there is a question that I have. I am asking you if you drop a very heavy, heavy ball and a feather into a flow at the same time, which one will hit the ground first? So what is the answer for that? Who can give the answer for that? Now, if you drop, let's say you, uh, okay, so one says that those will hit the same time, right? Is that true? Everybody agrees? So I have I have another message calling heavy ball will hit first. Right. Anybody else? Okay, so Navin says only if there is not any air friction. I guess he what he means is uh, if both will uh, flow onto the I mean uh, both will be on the floor at the same time if you do not have air friction, right? Right, so actually the, uh, so what Naveen is telling, I guess is correct because uh, it's it's not, I mean, everybody knows that I'm a, so Tarang, Sita, Yeah, so one of you used to tell that uh, the heavy ball will hit first for the in the flow, and that's also correct because we are under the uh, environment that we have this air friction and everything. And in practical situations, when you drop, the heavy ball will hit first, right? But the truth is that both should uh, come to the flow at the same time because this is independent of the mass. Right, the acceleration is independent of the mass, which which I hope that you all know very well. But the answers that uh, comes here may be based on because of the air friction, uh, the feather will have more uh, will be more slower compared to the compared to heavy ball, right? So that's normally what happens when when you have the air friction. But if you now, if I do the same experiment, for example, on the moon, what will happen? So, if you drop the, both, both the heavy ball and the feather at the same time on the moon, what will happen? Due to the atmosphere of the moon, so they will fall at the same time, right? So, that is uh, the theory because this is independent of mass. So, I hope all of you know 
this basic thing which comes out uh, from the Newton second law of motion. Right. So, I mean, there are some other extra information that I have mentioned here, which I, I don't want to talk everything. And, uh, right. Something that is here is what happens if the external forces are zero. And these are, once again, very, very basic thing. And by the way, thank you everyone who posted the answers for the question. Now, this happens when you bring a body from a very far away star planet, right? So this should be over by the way. Now when the acceleration is zero, or when, when, the, when the force is zero, we know that mass should not be zero and according to the Newton's law, the acceleration is zero, right? If the acceleration is zero, we know that if the body is either moving at a constant speed or it will uh, be at rest, right? Now, there is no way to tell if something is moved and moves and if something is moving at a constant speed or at a rest in physics, right? This is the uh, what we know from uh, Newton's second law, right? Now, one example is our, uh, if we think about our our cell, the Earth is rotating about its axis around thirty kilometers per second, as I as I have mentioned here. And at the same time, the Earth is uh, the excuse me. <coughs> at the same time. The Earth is moving around the Sun, right, at a considerable speed, as, uh, which means actually we are moving a lot, right. But however, we don't feel it, and so this is one such situation. So, which means the systems that are at rest or moving with a constant speed, so they are called inertial frames. And these are just basic definitions that you would already know, right? So I just mentioned. Now, in, uh, normally Newton's, uh, Newton was actually the first one to uh, realize the, uh, this concept about the parameterization of differential equations. So what that means is uh, something like this. So let me just, uh, why having this? I guess I can you can see my new screen right here. Right, so let's say you have a particle, something like this. Any particle that you have. You can uh, give a position if this particle is moving with time. What you can do is you can always give the position as a function of time, right? At, at what time the fun at this particular time the function is there, and this particular time the function is there, and this particular time the function is there, like that. So, which means you can uh, mention the position as a function of time, right? So this is what we will do throughout uh, our course by solving different problems. We will try to find the solution, what is the position? And this is actually, uh, now if you think about the Newton's law, it is a differential, uh, second order differential equation. And
can one of you confirm me whether you can see what I am writing here in the screen? Hello. Yes, sir. We can see the screen. Okay. Right. Right, so we normally write uh, position as a function of time, and then you you know that x dot t, which is the velocity, you can write as a, a differentiation with respect to time, and at the same time, acceleration on the other hand is d squared x over dt squared. Right, so these are just basic definitions that you should know at the beginning right so what we will do this is actually called uh, a time parameterization of a position of an object right because uh, always we write the position as a function of time so that's normally what happens in uh, most of the problems now these are just uh, very very basic definitions that uh, you already know the velocity acceleration and the position of a particle. Now, when, when it comes to solving a problem uh, in physics, before we move into the next section, actually, there are several steps that we use to follow, right? Now, solution of this particular but equations to the second order differential equation is actually will come as the trajectory of the particle, right? That's the final uh, point in that particular section. But so these are few things that you probably need to know before we move into the next section. How do you solve the problem? Because in this particular lecture series in classical mechanics, what we will do is Throughout the whole lecture series, we will be solving problems once you know this theory about the Lagrangian mechanics, right? The rest of the things is that throughout lectures, I will be introducing different techniques that will help to solve problems and interpret the results physically in different ways, right? But for all these lectures that I will be doing, these points are very important. That is, when you need to solve a problem at any time, number one is, so these are like standard techniques of solving problems. Draw a diagram, right? Sometimes you may have heard about these things in A-levels as well. So the first thing is you have to draw a diagram, right? And then write down what you know and what you are trying to find. So the next thing is you have to make sure that what you know by reading that particular problem, right? So this is actually more relevant to not into the not only for the textbook questions that you will get. This is actually at the same time this is more relevant to real world problems that you are going to solve in future, right? At any any point. So that's why I need to emphasize on these things. So any any time when you come across with the problem in science, it is always helpful to draw a diagram, right? And you will see that uh, in Lagrangian mechanics, this drawing this diagram is very, very important, right? Most of the things will depend on that. So the correct diagram, and then you decide what you already know about this particular problem. And then you have to figure out what you are trying to find, right? So that will be uh, next target. And for our problems, it is we used to always solve things symbolically. So then, solve it 
same bullet here. So you, you will get a note for this as well, but just need to mention these points by writing. So then use some symbols and use all the problem, right? So that's the next step. And once you solve things symbolically or any, anyhow you solve it, there are ways to check whether your solution makes sense or not, right? So this is, these are things actually some of the time students are lacking of. So you have to draw the diagram and then you try to figure out from the details that you have what you already know and then you should go in and look at what you have to find. So you have to make these things clear before you do anything. And then you try to solve and you know some techniques. For example, if you are uh, solving a classical mechanics problem, you know some techniques, all right? For example, Lagrangian mechanics, and you are going to apply that and try to solve it symbolically, right? Using symbols, you are going to solve it. And when you are solving a problem, one thing that you need to consider is units and dimensions. Right? So when you uh, when you know more about unit, you can check whether units make sense, whether the dimensions are matched once you have a solution, right? So these are the techniques that we use to follow, right? And I know that you already know these things, so I don't I need to re-emphasize on these things before we start, right? Because you will be solving a lot of problems during these 40 lectures and you will have to go through all these steps again and again, right? And then another good way of uh, checking your solution is check for limiting or special cases, right? And then the orders of magnitude. This is very important even in uh, real world problems. For example, let's say you are going to measure the speed of a bus, right? So if you do some calculations and you figure out like you answer comes in like 1000 kilometers per hour, you should understand that in real world the bus will not go in that speed, especially in, uh, I mean, it's been, in real world, it doesn't happen, right? So then you should understand that, okay, there is something wrong with my as well. Then you can check for limiting cases and units and go up and see whether it went wrong, right? So these are just very, very common, like problem solving skills. We used to tell that uh, skills that you should have. So make sure that you keep in mind these points at any time in, uh, even in this course, and this will be important for other courses as well. Right? Especially in classical mechanics, you will be like solving a lot of problems. So, so make sure that you have these things in mind. And uh, so, an example that I have put here. So, let me just go through my notes again, and I will assume that you can again see. So I'm just interchanging my screen just to uh, note you a few things. And for example, now you know this uh, simple pendulum, right? Everybody knows about the simple pendulum that uh, you can you can get an idea about this simple pendulum just by looking at the dimensions. You know that. There is mass involved here, and I have a diagram here, and there is a length of the string. So we know that uh, the gravity is measured, how gravity is measured, and the units of that, and then you can have the the dimensions of each of these quantities, and we know that the theta is dimensionless, and then if you need to find the omega. Uh, as the frequency, we know that omega is like 1 over t and from that you can just assume that to get this particular dimensions to the right hand side, you have something, you should have something like this, right? You may be, uh, you may be thinking that how, uh, 
how this f theta naught comes because the theta is dimensionless it can always appear via right you can't ignore that but at the same time you know that uh, uh, the period of uh, pendulum like this is we used to write this as t equal to five times g over l and the square root of that right but uh, at the same time uh, please keep in mind is is this i have a question for you now when you write t equal to five square root g over l for the uh, period of a pendulum is this really true or is there any are there any different answers What do you think? Like, is it only true for like small angles or? And keep in mind that uh, your answer for that, which you get as t equal to five square root of g over l, so that is actually true only for small angles, right? If you remember that you use this equation of a simple harmonic motion, you apply the simple harmonic motion. Uh, here, so I have, uh, uh, one of you have tell that you consider for small theta as well, and that is absolutely correct. And this is why you just remove this function under normal circumstances. When you have small angles, you just don't consider about them. But truth is, this is not an easy problem to solve, this pendulum problem, right? So you have to have this, uh, when you make it to a large angle, the answer will be a little bit different, right? And if time permits, and if, you are, if I get some time to teach you a little bit of programming, I will give you a small uh, problem at some point that you will get the exact answer for that, right? So that's only the time permits, I will see. It, it's right. So that's one thing. And I actually want to give you an example that you can, as the final section, so let's say you have something like this so let me again uh, move my screen right so now first so i'm going to ask you a question and check whether you can uh, answer for that based on these skills that I have mentioned, right? So this is a simple problem. So let's say you have a man throwing the ball, or let's say any kind of object like this from a cliff. And let's say the height is H. And you know that this ball will go like that. And if I take this horizontal distance as six, so I have I am going to give you five answers, and I want the answer for this uh, length x. Right? So the the question is. So these, these are the all the data that I have. Question is what is the horizontal distance the ball can travel and also I'm going to give you five possible solutions and you have to select the correct one, right? Correct one, or at least uh, the solution that makes sense. So one solution is 
so let me uh, so to make it easy for you to get the solutions i am going to name the solutions as a and the b is v squared over g and the c will be v squared h over g and the square root of that and solution d is v squared over g 1 plus 2gh over v squared right and then there is another solution v squared over g 1 plus 2gh over v squared and h will be v squared over g 1 minus 2gh over v squared right so these are the so there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 now let's say i have these six solutions these are the possible solutions right so what i want you to do is select the most let's say most probable solution right so everyone uh, please think about this and i i hope all of you can see the solutions in my screen and then uh, once you decide okay this is the solution send me you don't have to type the solution right so send me just whether your solution is a or b or c or d or e or f like that. so this should be f and h right Right. So one thing to note is, I don't expect you to write the the equations and solve this, right? So you can guess the solution. Somehow you have you can find this, right? Depending on the skills that we talked previously about the let's say about the problem solving skills, right? So I'm I'm just testing whether we have those skills with it. And once you have the answer. Whether it's A O B C D E F G, just send me a message to the chat as a direct message so that others won't see. Right? I mean, just do it genuinely. I know that you can just have thousands of ways of passing the messages right through the internet, but I just need to check where should I start. Right? That's the idea. So be genuine with your ideas. This is just not to check whether one is better than the other or not so i just need to make sure where all of you are then i can start the next lecture from there right? by adding or removing something and adding new things and those kind of things so i will give you five minutes now 8 35 so i will come back at 8 40 to check your answers and post your answers here once you once you are done and then uh, we will discuss about those things and see which one may be the most probable answer, right? So try it yourself and let's see the answer.
Okay, so there is a question asking, is it okay to uh, initial velocity to get horizontal? Uh, actually, it, it comes, it goes to an angle like this, right? Not horizontal in this particular situation. I got one solution. Uh, so anybody else who would like to have a solution for this one? Okay, so I got two solutions. Right, so okay, I, it seems to me I have only two solutions up to now. So what I'm going to do is I will leave this problem to everyone else to find the solution. And we'll take this one again at the beginning of the next week. Right? So all of you have to come up with a solution. And if you go back 
go back and look at the uh, the steps that I have mentioned here for solving a problem. Uh, so I would just check for the limiting cases here, right? So that you will find the, the solution, find the solution, right? So there are two solutions and and then you need to explain how you got the solution as well, right? So there are there are way, different ways of getting the solution. One example is I will just show you one and then you can think the other things in the same way and select the most probable solution. Now think about this solution right here. Will that solution even make sense? Because the reason is now this has gh squared over v squared, right? Now what happens when h is equal to zero? This answer will be zero, right? Is it possible? Because when you uh, when you actually uh, if h equals zero means you basically take this man down to the floor and still he throw this ball right so once you throw it from some velocity it should have some kind of horizontal distance right it will not be the same as you throw it here but it should have some value right? it, it should not be zero but what ha has happened here is when when the when, when you bring h to zero in this particular solution then what happens is this solution the horizontal distance goes to zero that that is not possible right it shouldn't be happening so this is why so you can take this solution out because it that solution physically doesn't make sense right so just think about the other solutions in that way uh, so i'm not going to give you solutions right and think about uh, it in that way and come up with your solutions and so Naveen and Keshira gave me two solutions and so others uh, please think about that because you have to build up these skills throughout uh, this course right so that's what I want you to do and the next day apart from this I will be posting three questions for you tonight so these will be just three basic problems that you have to solve to using Newton's second law. And then we will be discussing those solutions in the next day, right? So I would like uh, you to explain me the solutions. And I would like actually, I guess you, what you can do is I will post it as, as an assignment so that you can solve the problems and then upload a PDF for me. You can take pictures and insert into a word document, whatever you like. But uh, I know that you are working with limiting facilities. Some of you, if you have, in, if any of you have issues with uploading or about facilities, just email me that you can't uh, do this due to this reason, right? So then I will come with alternatives. So so don't worry about those things, like right, that you have. You don't have a computer so that you can't do it or something like that then let, just let me know right other than that i will expect that all of you would do it right right so we are into final 10 minutes so so normally i would give you time to ask any questions at this point in the final few minutes right actually i was to discuss a bit about how to use jupyter notebook and how to do calculations and how to use that to do your work efficiently, which I did not have time today, but I will take that as the first thing in the next day. And uh, I would like you to search about that in the internet so that you will get some idea about uh, these things. The reason actually that I specifically uh, try to use the Jupyter Notebook is this will be the future and this will be useful for you by I mean, once you learn it you can use it later for different things so these are like extra skills that you would need and i can see that your class half of you did maths and half of you had the computer science as a subject and both both of you have the advantage because uh, 
the course is highly mathematical, but I will also try to incorporate some uh, little bit of programming at some point. So both of you will can work together because uh, the students who have the computer science knowledge can help others to catch up and the students who have mathematics knowledge can help others to catch up the other theoretical parts, right? Because mathematics is a must that you know. Uh, so the next day, uh, we will start from uh, where we stop today. So basically, next section will be about talking about some problems uh, about the Newtonian mechanics. So make sure that you submit those uh, problems so that I can, if you know how to find solutions, then I can move a little bit quickly uh, to the next section. So, so expect there will be two or three problems posted tonight to the LMS and make sure that you have the solutions and submit it by Friday. So I, I don't want you to give more time for that, but because that will be a one hour work. So just uh, sim three simple problems. Right. So just to understand the things that we are doing. Right, so anybody have any questions up here?